Hey everyone, today we're going to look at GarageBand, which comes free with the Mac computer. Anytime you purchase a Mac, GarageBand should be in the application folder. And uh, depending on what version you have, you can download the latest version. And when you first open it, this is what it looks like. Uh, it's going to say new project, learn to play, lesson store, recent project templates. So we're just going to open up the empty project first. And we're going to get a prompt here to pick a software instrument, which is an instrument you can play from a keyboard, which I have a keyboard right in front of me. We're going to do that in a second. You can plug a microphone into the audio input and record. You could plug a guitar into your audio interface, and you can also use a drummer track, which we'll go over in a second. So here we go. I'm going to create a software instrument. And what that does is it opens up the library. All of the sounds and all of the sources here are allowing you to play from a MIDI USB keyboard. And all you need to do is plug that directly into your USB port on a computer and you should be good to go. So this file folder here opens up the side which is the library. So the library are sounds that we can physically play with our keyboard. And there's a wide list here. You can see there's user patches that you can save. Default is the classic electric piano. And as we can hear that, it's really a beautiful sound. A lot of people use these sounds for playing professionally in main stage. All of these sounds are really coming from uh, the big brother of this and the big sister of this, which is Logic Audio. A Logic Studio, a Logic Pro X, whatever it is called at the moment. And this is the classic electric piano sound, Tyne, Fender Rhodes type of sound. I could pick many other sounds. I could pick a drum kit here if I wanted to. And that's going to change what instrument is there. But if I click here, I can get a new software instrument. That really is the best thing to do. Keep that classic electric piano uh, here. In case you want to go back to it and then here you can just change we could put a drum kit here and we don't have to show that message every time we can continue and if I play the keyboard I could play a drum set from my physical keyboard I've got all the drum samples mapped out to every single key Really, some great samples here. Uh, we can go back here in the, in the library to the original, what we saw. Um, vintage electric piano, synthesizer. These are all the synthesizer sounds. Lead synthesizer sound. I can pick any one of these. And here we go. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, pad. Let's see what, I'll just pick a dream voice. And if you notice here, there's controls here that you can change and edit the sound. cool all right so we're gonna go back we're gonna get out of the library there for a minute so I, I suggest to anyone that's new to this plug in a keyboard just go through some of these sounds in the library and there's a little card catalog here for all of these sounds so this is visually showing you a library that you can pick any sounds you can physically play from the keyboard and you can actually record them here and this will record the MIDI data. So here I just will do something simple. And here's my MIDI data. 
I can edit these notes just like you can in Logic. If I don't like the sound, I can move it. This is MIDI data. It's much like a piano roll. This is a piano roll. And I can actually see the score too. I can see the notes that I played. Very cool. All right, so if it's green, that means it's MIDI data. M-I-D-I, -I, Musical Instrument Digital Interface. A lot of flexibility here. This is data, it's not the sound. The sound is coming from the internal software instrument. Uh, this is the note on, note off information. It's got velocity, meaning how loud or soft I played it. Uh, this is, I can quantize it, meaning I can auto-correct it to the nearest 16th note, to the nearest quarter note, to the nearest eighth note, 32nd note, 64th note, so up and so forth, half note, triplets. Um, and I can have different quantization of swing. And swing is gives you a different groove. It's not that it's going to align it perfectly. Much like in the MPC uh, swing uh, choices in quantization, GarageBand now has some choices here, which is pretty cool. So if you want to humanize your MIDI parts, whether they're drums or keyboards, you can try doing different versions of this. Swing um, triplets, swing A, B, D, C. They're all different. I would experiment with that. All right, so this is the library here. You can leave this on. This is a question mark, which is a quick help. So if you're not sure of something, just hover over it and you'll see exactly what it is. This is the... Um, very interesting here, you can actually edit some of the sounds. It's simple, they call them smart controls. They're very simple controls. So if I play the keyboard, I can make more of the bell sound. I can add some treble. I can add some tremolo. can add some bass, some drive, some chorusing, some reverb. We can hear more reverb here. Really great sounds. All right, so that's the library, the smart controls, and here is the editor, which is what I showed you before. This is in the piano roll. If there is digital audio here, this is going to look a little bit different. Uh, this is a grid that you're looking at as well, and I can adjust the grids. So you can either zoom in or zoom out to see some of these notes. And right now, these are set up as 16th notes, one E and a two. And this is the second measure, this is the third measure. I'm sorry, this is the first beat of the first measure, the second beat of the first measure, the third beat and the fourth beat. And here is the beginning of the second measure. And we can see there's a ruler up here. So all of your controls are up in the upper part of GarageBand. This is the rewind, this is the fast forward. This is all the way to the beginning. I'm going to close everything. I don't need the quick help on. I'm going to close the library. So now we get a full uh, sense of what the program, the DAW is. Here, this is your timeline area. I have only have two sounds here. Um, this is again, stop, play. This is record. I can rec hit record and set up a metronome to give uh, the sense of time. And I can do a count off. In here, I can see the bars and the beats, the tempos. I can change the key and I can change the time signature, which is very cool. If I click here, I can look at this display mode in, in different ways. I can look at it beats in time, beats. Uh, I can look at it just the beats, time, or beats and project. This is usually the default. All right, this is something that's very interesting. This is cycle, play, and record. Uh, there's a yellow line up here. I can drag and place it anywhere I want. If I want this to go to measure eight or nine, eight measures, I can play this and this will repeat. If I loop it here, this is now, I don't have to keep playing this. It's gonna play on its own. It's cycle, play, and record. So if you wanna record a two bar drum loop, you can do that, just shorten it, and you can also work on different sections of your song. I use this all the time, all producers use this. It's a great tool, uh, so you don't have to keep fishing around with your mouse and clicking on the pointer. 
It's great if you want to work on the verse. Um, it's really cool. So this is also, you can tune your guitar here. That's what this is. It's disabled because I don't have an audio track selected. Here's your master volume slider. Here's where you can put notes in the notepad if you want to write the verse. You use this sound, you use that sound. You want to put your lyrics there. That's a great spot for it. All right, so here is where we get to the, to the part of GarageBand that's really, really important. And since I own Logic, I'm going to see all of the sounds from Logic Audio. You don't have to purchase Logic, but that's why there's all of these loops here. GarageBand, as default, is not going to have as many loops as you're seeing here, but it is going to have a lot. And you can download, if you're not sure, you can always go here and go Sound Library. All my sounds are installed, so I'm good to go. All right, so the loop library is where you're going to find your sounds, your samples, your pre-recorded audio, and there's multiple categories here. And so you can expand this if you'd like. If I want to click on all drums, these are all my drum sounds, my drum beats, everything is here. If you want to hear a loop, you just click on it. If you don't want to hear it, you are going to click on it again. So I'm going to lower this because it's a bit loud. And if you like this loop, you can click on favorites and you can always go back to it. So your favorite folder is here. I don't really use this much. So these are the two favorites that I had selected. And you can just go through these loops. There's tons of loops here, many different um, types of loops. Piano, guitar, strings, sound effects, jingles, saxophone, flutes, textures, xylophone. Just if you want to hear kicks, big room kick. There you go. You got a start of a dance track right there. If you want to use that, you just drag it. You can't double click it. That's what you do in other programs. If I double click on this, it's just going to play it and stop it. If I want to use it, I have to drag it here. Do not drag it here. Why is that? Because it's not an audio track. It's a MIDI track. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Uh, you want to drag it on its own track so it forms its own track. So you have a volume. You're not going to put your kick drums with your piano parts. You need a separate volume slider for this. And it shows you. It's labeled. It's very cool. You have a mute button. You have a solo button. And if we go to this here, we can see what this is. This is the monitoring button. Hear incoming signals on audio tracks that are not record enabled. This is useful when setting levels or practicing parts before recording. Hardly use that. I don't use that much. Uh, it's only you're going to see that on audio tracks. You're not going to see that on these MIDI tracks. Uh, it's always good to use the quick help for reference. And let's see what this sounds like. That's interesting. Does it not have sufficient access privileges? You might get that once in a while. It's probably a logic file that's not working properly here. There's just one kick. Yeah, these samples are great. Um, so these are just different kicks. If I want to hear snare patterns, I want to hear hi-hat patterns. So here you go, you got a dance beat right here. If I extend this, this is how you loop something. I'm going to place this here. Five. I'm going to mute this because I'm not sure that's the right part for this. There you go, you got the start of a dance groove right there. And it's just going to repeat, it's going to cycle. This is cycle, play, and record. So I always tell my students, and I think it's real important, the first step you should do is get comfortable with the layout of GarageBand. Go and click up here. Use the quick help to see what things are. Um, see where all your controls are. It's very simple. Everything is laid out on top. Look at what the ruler is. Music is divided up into measures. Very important. You have your volume slider here. And also, I did not go over this. This is the media 
like to access my photos. Well, I guess. All right. And any movies? Well, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff here, as you can see. These are these are all my iTunes music. I can take anything from iTunes and just drag it in here. Anything I purchased, any MP3. Um, so it's pretty cool. So this is a media browser. Any kind of movies I have here, any audio. And sometimes it does that. All right, so we're just gonna focus on the loop browser right now. And I suggest to anybody, when you're trying to write a song, uh, just keep it real simple. Start with one part, like a drum beat then go to a bass line and just see how these two things feel. Use the cycle, play, and record. So now say you have a dance beat, click on instrument, and then you go over to bass. A lot of times in dance music, we hear synthesizer bass. Even though there is, there is a real acoustic bass or electric bass, I should say, in dance music, most often modern day dance music has a synthesizer playing these bass lines. So a good way to figure this stuff out is to play. Now I got this going, that's gonna repeat, and I'm just gonna audition things against it. Wow, that sounds cool right off the bat. So if I like this, if I don't like it, I stop it. If I like it, great. It's gonna play right in sync with it. I can just take this and drag it and put it here. Now, it's a good thing to just get some ideas out of the way. I mean, we don't know what part this is gonna be. This could be the intro, this could be your chorus. You don't have to start this at the same time, but I would I would place all these things together to get a feel for what these things sound like together. And then you could arrange it. You could take the bass line and start it at measure five, start it at measure nine. So then I like the way this sounds. It's awesome, it's a great intro. So the next thing I wanna look for in music, uh, one of the elements of music is besides rhythm, uh, we have bass, and we also need harmony. And harmony in music is chords. When you layer and stack notes on top of each other, uh, those are chords. You can play chords on piano, you can play chords on guitar, you can sing with multiple people in harmony, and that's why we have choirs. Uh, you cannot play um, multiple notes, but you can on a flute. They call it double stops, but it's you know it's not like playing three or four notes at the same time like you can. I have ten fingers, and I can play a lot of these um, sounds on the keyboard. And we're not hearing that. That's weird because it's not selected. All right, it's a great chord there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes I'm playing at the same time. And that is the study of harmony. When you move from one chord to another, that is called a chord progression. So that's what I'm looking for now. I'm gonna play this little groove here. Apologize for the noise here, but it's noisy. Must be my computer making that sound, or so I'm going to look for maybe a synthesizer sound, since, and I'm going to look for something that's going to fit this. I'm going to hit play, and I'm just going to play some of these um, little textures here. Kind of cool for an intro. Well, I like that. So I'm going to bring that in here. Again, I don't know if that's going to start right off the bat. I may arrange this a lot differently. And then let me get something that's going to play more chord oriented type of sounds. That nah, doesn't work. We can tell that doesn't work. So right now, this is a melody, this is a lead. Don't know if I really want to go there yet. I'm looking for more, 
That's very cool for a transition. It's too defined, I don't want that yet. That's kind of cool. Alright. And I want to find a uh, melody that I'm just going to stick in there. What is a melody? Well, a melody is single notes that go up and down in different, uh, it has shape, it has contour. Think of someone singing a lead vocal. Um, you know, a, a melody needs to breathe in order it, for it to be memorable. It also needs to have some repetition. So what you're looking for in these pre-recorded loops are something that is going to catch your ear. There's got to be something in there that will fit this as well. So let's look under, and I'm going to keep it in the electronic category with synths. If I see anything that says lead, or even some of these arpeggios are really nice, that's really cool. I want to use that. I'm just going to drag stuff and put this in here, and then I'm going to arrange it for an introduction. That's going to be my first step. That's too strong. I'm thinking of something I can hum or sing. That's going to capture someone's attention. It's more something we'd hear. Let's go genre of electronic. Mm, that is probably the most used sound out of any middle school student. <laughs> so, we've been hearing that for about 15 years. That's cool. Chordal synth pattern. Very nice, but not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for... That's cool. A little busy. lines. Hmm. Let's see what that sounds like. here to um, get like an intro. So most introductions in dance music and pop music, especially in 4-4, four, four, are going to go in multiples of 4, 8, 16, 32. So I am going to arrange this. So maybe I'm just going to start with the kick. And then I'm going to bring the hi-hats in. I'm going to build this as it goes along. So I'm at least go to 16. So I'm going to end at the beginning of 17. I'm going to go here. I've decided I'm going to make a dance track here for an intro. I'm just going to do an intro in this lesson, and then maybe in other lessons I'll build upon this and do the other sections. Um, let's see what we have here. Let's make this develop. Let's get this developing. Now that's kind of cool. Nah, I don't want that stuff to happen yet, so I'm going to just drag all this stuff out, and I'm going to develop this a little bit. I like this little sound effect all right all right now I'll bring something else in here in that little arpeggiated pattern. And I need to look at this. I want this to start at nine. There we go, there's the playhead. So I'm gonna move this. Now, I don't wanna repeat that multiple times. It's gonna be much more effective if I 
let that go. Play it once and then repeat it afterwards. Again, we want some repetition. Why? Because the listener needs to hear that repetition in order to remember this. And then here I can bring in this little melody, or I can bring this synth part. And then I'm going to repeat this one more time. And bring this in right here. All right, so let's hear what we have so far. I can mix this as I'm going along. That kick stand out. I can pan the hi-hats to the right if I want to. It's kind of cool. I can leave the bass in the middle as I should. Nice. And I can get some other transitions in there. I'm going to have to go back to this. All right. Obviously, you can tell it needs to continue, right? So I'm going to go here. Continue this. And now this could be my intro. It looks a little odd as far as the length, but it's kind of my intro. And it's got to go one more. Apologize for the sound. This is what it's like to live in New York City area. It's got to continue that, and I might cut this only halfway here. So, how you do that? Well, I could split the region. Placing it here, I can go Command T. Oh, and what I do, I had everything else selected, but that's fine. I can undo that if I want. And I can just click here, Command T, where the play it is. And that's going to split this. And I can move this over. I want to repeat this one more time. It's not finishing the phrase. And then I might edit the notes to just change the melody. Let's hear it again. I mean, I can just leave it there, take out these last few notes, and that, that could be my intro. Pull that out. But I don't know, sometimes you make a mistake and it sounds cool. So let's hear this again. And I can even continue and do that last line one more time. And that could be my intro. So you can quick swipe everything, and just move it. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm pressing the Alt Option key and drag, and that'll copy it. So here we have, and I can make this look smaller that way. So this is an intro right here. This is an entire intro.
eventually I would add some what we call transitions, some swooshing sounds, some reverse cymbals to go to set up a section. But I think this would be the first thing that you should do um, when you're trying to write music in a DAW like this that has pre-recorded loops. Find a loop that you really like with the drums, start with that, develop it a little bit, start bringing in some keyboard sounds, some bass lines, some harmony parts that are played on a synth or guitar chord type of pattern and some melodic fragments and melodic phrases. Uh, again, in the intro, you don't want to, in this kind of music, you want to allude to different parts. You don't want to give, I mean, you can, you can give everything away and, and start with a hook right away, but a lot of this music develops over time and it builds, it builds and builds into a climax. And that's something that you can do in building up from the pre-chorus to the choruses. So right now, here's an intro. So here's something that is really cool uh, that I might as well set up right now. If I go to track, I can go show arrange track. And now I know I have an intro. And my intro is going to be, let's see how long this is going to be. I think it's going to, right here. There's my intro. This you would move over, otherwise the song is just going to stop there. So just get that pointer out of the way. And there you go. And then save it. We're going to call this Save As. Project Dance EM See, and it's going to save as a default in the GarageBand folder. I'm going to click Save, and I can go back to it. So that's really it for today. That should be the first lesson. Get familiar with all of the sounds, the functions in GarageBand. It's a really powerful program. There's so much you can do with this. And later on, if you want to go into using Logic, I believe Logic is now $250 on the a Apple Store. And they give you 90 days to try it out. And any project that you start with in GarageBand will open up in Logic. Logic has a lot of advanced features. This looks exactly like it, but it's not as deep. There's no uh, mixer screen. Uh, you can add plugins to this, and that will be in a later lesson. I have tons of plugins on my computer here, and I can open them up in GarageBand. But you could take this song and open it up into GarageBand. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, you know, just get started playing music. Just pl press play, press record, drag some loops, and you're happening. All right, so that's it for today. See you soon. Take care. Bye.